Good morning. It is five o'clock in the morning. That used to be four o'clock a couple of days ago, and they just changed the time. So, uh, got me getting up. The old rooster's out there crowing off. He's telling the country it's time to get up. Figured I'd uh, read a little bit in uh, Proverbs uh, 14. Or I should say 13. Proverbs 13 is where I left off. Uh, it's a good day to sacrifice a little bit. Make our morning sacrifice to God and spend a little time in the scriptures. Uh, I've always believed that the sacrifices we read about with Cain and Abel as, uh, is in our time. Our sacrifice is the time that we spend seeking God. And trying to understand this wonderful but large, lengthy instruction pamphlet God has given us. And uh, there's nothing makes a man feel better on the long run than doing a little scripture every day, every morning and every night when we go to bed. I think it's a wise thing to do. That being said, 13 reads, A wise youth. He accepts his father's rebuke. A young mocker doesn't. Now this book is a little different from what you may be reading. This is called The Living Bible, uh, paraphrased. And uh, I'm not sure uh, what church uh, studies with this Bible. I have a lot of Bibles. I know you always hear me say that. But I, I keep a large collection of them. I just bought about... Uh, Nine more of them, I believe it was yesterday, in an estate sale. And I always love to look through those Bibles, that what people had underlined and, and what people thought. And sometimes I pray for those people in those Bibles, too. At the, at the, uh, I've, sometimes I find beautiful things in there. Like I remember one of these older Bibles, a soldier was going off to war back in the 40s. And it had a very touching letter to his mom. And uh, uh, so it's a... It's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice thing to collect, but this particular Bible is easy to read. It explains uh, by the translations that it uses uh, in a language that is more closer to our modern day language. So, and I'll be reading from this one this morning. Uh, a wise youth accepts his father's rebuke. A young mocker doesn't. A good man wins his case by careful argument. The evil-minded only wants to fight. How many times have we seen this in our lives and how many times have we played this part? I think as we read these, uh, these uh, light and dark uh, comparisons to the good wise man versus the evil man, evil bad man, we have to realize that we are both of these men. We are both the good and the evil. And uh, it's not so much that we're talking about different people is that we're talking about different times in our own life. Uh, so uh, it's, not, uh, it's not good to be the guy who just wants to win an argument, be that with, be that with uh, people we know or don't know. It's, uh, it's not a healthy thing to be strifeful, to have that spirit of strifeful in our hearts. Self-control means controlling the tongue. A quick report or retort can ruin everything. Lazy people want much but get little. While the dil diligent are prospering. Uh, and when it says diligent here, I have to assume we're talking about the diligent in spirit. Um, I think uh, if we seek diligently, God's word and his will for us uh, will prosper. It may not be money we prosper in, but it will be wisdom and love and happiness. And uh, a good man hates lies. Wicked men continuously lie continuously and come to shame. Uh, if you ever had one of those uh, friends that would lie all the time, you know, even when the truth would serve better, I have a couple of friends like that, that uh, they just lie. They can't help themselves. They, they, they think the lie is more exciting 
And I kind of accept them for who and what they are, but I always keep that in mind when I'm getting information handed to me from them. That uh, they seem to think the lie is uh, is bolder and and uh, speaks better than the truth. And we have to be careful of not being a person like that. Um, a man's goodness helps him all through life, while evil men are being destroyed by their wickedness. I'll use the same analogy about my friends who lie so often. Is that uh, you really can't believe a whole lot they say, and uh, this is how you get destroyed by this wickedness when you when you lie so much. People can't put a lot of stock in you. Better to be a truthful man. Some rich people are poor, and some poor people have great wealth. Of course, that's easy enough to understand. Some rich people are bad characters that are poor in character not happy you know the, the the rich people kill themselves as much as poor people every day that ought to tell us that the answer is not in money uh, it's in the riches of god it's in reading the scripture it's in the wisdom that comes with this scripture being kidnapped and held for ransom never worries a poor man uh, a good man a good man's life is full of light uh, this uh, to me is about speaking of perspective uh, no matter where you are in life no matter what is happening to you through the world if your mind is right with the scriptures if your mind is right if you're letting your mind be brainwashed by the scriptures and yes that's a good term brainwashed if your butt gets dirty you need to wash it right if your hands are dirty you need to wash it right well, if your brain is dirty, you need to wash it. And there's no better way to wash uh, a dirty brain, a dirty mind, than rinse it with the Word of God. It'll wash it clean. So, uh, But that's what controls our outlook in life, is the state of our mind. And uh, a good man's life is full of light. And what makes a good man here is reading these scriptures. It's the Word of God. It's the only thing that can can rinse us off and, and get us clean is that power of Jesus Christ. The sinner's road is dark and gloomy for the other side of the coin of that saying. and you know, We all see people that are dark and gloomy and sometimes we are the dark and gloomy people and we have to fight against that and we have to as a friend of mine said yesterday, we have to plant good seeds, which is our thoughts. If we think in terms of goodness and kindness and honor to God, if we think in those ways, then we've got good seed and we won't have a, a road that is dark and gloomy. Uh, pride leads to arguments. Be humble, take advice, and become wise. This saying here, uh, uh, take advice, uh, it's important who you take advice from. The Spirit of God has always given us advice. And sometimes it could come through a mouth of somebody that you wouldn't think where advice comes. But if it's good advice, you'll know it by the fruit of it. If it's bad advice, you'll know it the same way. There are evil people that want to give you bad advice. Uh, so... Take good advice, and uh, it'll straighten out our, our heart and our minds. Wealth from gambling quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to think that if I could stack some money, that uh, that would be much happier. But the truth is, uh, back when I had uh, some money, um, I became sadder, I became despondent, I became out of uh, focus of what God wanted for me. So I promptly got rid of the money, just like this book says. It spins quick. And when I got rid of the money, and I got the need of God's Word for the direction of everyday life, I started to become happy again. So money is not conducive of happiness. I'm sure it's not that way for everybody. But money is not conducive of happiness. If anything, it goes the other way. The best we can hope for in this life is for God to meet our needs 
and, the, and for us to know the difference between a need and a want. Uh, a need is uh, something good for us, uh, but when we want things that we don't need, then uh, therein lies folly. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when dreams come true, at least there is life, at last there is life and joy. Uh, hope is the things that uh, faith uh, is made of. There's no better hope than the hope we put in Jesus Christ and uh, the hope that, that someday this world we're living in at present is going to become better. Uh, it's a good thing to hope for that and there's no better way to do that than clean our own brains and our own minds by reading these scriptures. I know I'm hitting on that heavy today but uh, in my own life it's been that important. Despise God's word and find yourself in trouble. Obey it and succeed. The advice of a wise man refreshes like water from a mountain spring. Notice there's a condition here from a wise man. Advice from an unwise man, an earthly man, a carnal man, would have the opposite effect. It would be like bitter, bitter waters from a bitter well. Those accepting it become aware of the pitfalls on ahead. Uh, when a wise man or a godly man is giving us advice, uh, we can see the pitfalls ahead. Uh, we've, had a, we've had our fair warning, and that's a big thing in life. And uh, this Word of God gives us fair warning for the pitfalls ahead, and it helps us, it helps us have the heart and the frame of mind to avoid pitfalls. A man with good sense is appreciated. A treacherous man must walk a rocky road. A wise man thinks ahead. A fool doesn't. And even brags about it. He brags about how reckless he is. Last night, or yesterday, we got the word that a friend of ours lost a son to a motorcycle accident. And it... Um, um, just speaking of pitfalls and uh, man I thought if, if that man had been given the word as a youth the dangers of driving a motorcycle so fast how different his life could have came out how different the life of his mother could be um, in, in today's time that if we could have just accepted the dangers and the, knowing where the pitfalls were and of course driving a motorcycle at high rates of speed is a good example of not seeing the pitfalls ahead sometimes they could be costly fleshly as well as spiritually in fact I'd say oftentimes an unreliable messenger can cause a lot of trouble reliable communication permits progress uh, we're experiencing a reliable communication right here. If you refuse criticism, you will end in poverty and disgrace. If you accept criticism, you are on the road to fame. Uh, I don't know why they chose this word fame, but um, I think uh, to accept uh, godly criticism is probably the first step in turning our ships around if we're not happy if we don't have the amount of happiness that we that we desire uh, criticism is a big thing in life how we give it is at least as important or should be at least as important as how we receive it and uh, I think the key here is to give it with a graceful heart a loving heart so that it can be received in a graceful and loving heart if we give criticism in a mean spirit uh, it will be accepted in that same mean spirit and nothing can grow from it but the spirit in which that seed was born. Uh, enough said on that. It is pleasant to see plans develop. That is why fools refuse to give them up. Even when they are wrong. Now, if somebody uh, has plans of Achieving something that's not a godly thing, but a fleshly thing. A, f f uh, a fool, a foolish man, or a foolish time that we're in, 
will have a hard time letting that dream go and focusing on what is important. Uh, be with wise men and become wise. Be with evil men and become evil. This, we sort of have a tendency to become what it is we hang out with. And I guess, uh, I guess that's normal. If you, if you got a few old friends that you might have been another person when you knew them, say, in your teens, and sometimes you might get back with those old friends for a visit, and you might find yourself kind of acting the way you did in your youth when you were full of folly. And um, so in, in that sense, and we have to be careful who and what we hang out with because we'll become that in time. Curses uh, chase sinners while blessings chase the religious. When a good man dies, he leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. But when sinners dies, his wealth is stored up for the uh, godly. And here it's a small g, godly, uh, which means not a uh, not in a good sense, but in a uh, in a uh, carnal way. A man's grandchildren, as uh, I think uh, some of my grandchildren are looking back at this video right now, or great grandchildren, and this is what this means. This very act of me uh, sharing and reading scriptures with you all who've, who've come long after my death. Uh, this is the inheritance that we leave. The stories that you hear about your old pop up that he was a, a godly seeker and that he read his Bible and he had so many sit down on the front porch talks with you when you were kids about, uh, about God and why it's so important for you to seek God. This is the inheritance to his grandchildren. Uh, this is what a good man leaves behind, the thoughts, the good seeds that were planted from one uh, godly God-seeking mind to another. These are the true riches of this life. But when a sinner dies, his wealth is stored up for the godly small g, uh, not where we want our energy to be dumped into. A poor man's farm may have good soil, but injustice robs him of its riches. Um, if we looked at this carnally, we're talking about dirt and farming and produce of the ground. But let's look at it spiritually. Uh, you could have uh, uh, everything you need in your heart and in your mind to grow good uh, seed and grow good uh, produce for the Lord, which is... Uh, mindsets and and spiritual riches and if uh, injustice uh, which is uh, how we are when we don't see God injustice is how we are when we don't practice justice justice is how we are when we don't seek God is what injustice is if that robs our hearts and our minds we don't have anything to plan and share for our grandchildren later in life do we except yeah, there's nothing worse than being remembered as a grandfather who was a drunk or a hard case or um, in jail all the time. That's not a good inheritance to leave for our children. We want to leave them something better than that to fill their own hearts and minds with and hopefully some good seats to take in them. If you refuse to discipline your son, it proves you don't love him. For if you love him you will be prompt to punish him. Now, a lot of people disagree with this, but a lot of people are wrong. It's not the punishment of a child that is wrong. It is how we punish a child. If we punish a child in anger, if we let that child push our buttons till we become so angry that we're switching or putting, taking a belt to that kid and we are striking that kid in anger, we are doing that kid a great injustice and that harms that child's heart and mind. Um, as somebody who has given out many a whippings to grandchildren, uh, you have to take a child by the hand, walk them that long, slow walk to that front porch with that switch in hand, and, uh, and you have to tell that child what the crime was that they committed, what the infraction was. You have to tell them how many licks they're going to get for that crime. And you have to give them a hug and a kiss, and then you have to give them those sharp stings on the leg with that switch. 
and then while they're crying, you, know, you have to hug that kid and and tell the kid that hey, uh, you know, I hate pop pop hated to whip you, but look, you took it like a champ. You did your crime. You paid for your time that you did uh, with the punishment, and uh, and you stood up to that very well. Now let's move on, and we'll try to do better, not make that same mistake again. And these children always respond back to me with a great love and admiration because that makes the crime itself the bad guy, the evil one. And it makes you the loving one. And that's how you have to punish a child, with love, not with uh, animosity or anger. And young people today that are raising children, they have a lot of trouble understanding this because they weren't taught it when they were kids. Uh, and when you lose these lessons, when this wisdom of this wonderful Word of God uh, leaves our vocabulary and it leaves our hearts and our minds, we start to lose the, the riches of uh, things just like, well, how are we supposed to punish our children? And where's the differences come in? When are we punishing a child versus being cruel to a child? So... That's an important thing. That's why I spent a little time on that. I think as parents today, we, we have a lot of problem with that. Um, a good man eats to live while an evil man lives to eat. Uh, don't serve your flesh so much. If you're Sometimes I people watch while the wife is in Walmart, and I notice how obese uh, so much of our, our, our once great nation has become. Uh, gluttony is um, is when we give in to the flesh uh, to more than we give in to the spirit. And when we start to eat uh, to the point where we uh, have so much excess weight on us that it is a horrible task and misery just to get in and out of a car to go into the Walmart to load our buggies up with more unhealthy food. And this is a dangerous cycle. It, it keeps us from being happy. It keeps us from being healthy. So uh, we need to be careful uh, uh, not loving the eats of the, of the carnal world too much. It's a dangerous trap. And it can, it's an evil uh, thing that causes us a lot of heartache. A wise woman builds her house while a foolish woman tears her house down uh, by her own efforts. Uh, this goes both ways, carnally as well as spiritually. We're all a wise woman and we're all a foolish woman. Uh, let's take the carnal first. If, if we have told ourselves that we need an escape from our children and our households and we need a girls' night out with the girls to go have fun, um, this is us tearing down our houses. Our children and our husbands and our houses our households or shouldn't be anything to escape from. It should be something to delight in. And when we seek God, our homes can become that very thing. But if, our, if we teach ourselves by acts of escapism that our, we have a life that is worth something escaping, um, then we're, we're tearing our houses down. We shouldn't do that. Uh, the spiritual connotation for this and the way that we're all women being married to Christ um, is when we don't read this scripture, when we don't have enough... Uh, uh, I just realized I just now started reading 14. I'm, uh, I'm going to stop there. But the, the lesson is still true. Uh, don't tell ourselves, don't brainwash ourselves into thinking that uh, our homes and our families are something we need a break from. If you need a break from your home or your family, then um, it's because our minds are not in tune to what God is trying to lay on our hearts and our minds. And there's no better way to receive a, a dose of that than a daily dose of the Scripture. It, uh, it will metamorph itself and our minds will conform. The best thing about Christianity is how it conforms our hearts and our minds. As the whole purpose of this thing is to conform us into a loving state, which is a happy state. This is where happiness comes from. Now, I've enjoyed reading uh, this uh,
Proverbs 13. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad and hopeful that over the years, uh, my grandchildren, as they get curious about who the old pop-ops were, uh, uh, will start to look into some of these scriptures. And also, I'm um, uh, ecstatically happy about there's a few friends that, uh, that tend to want to spend some time in scripture with me in the morning. And when you read scripture by yourself, it's just not the same as when you read scripture with another person. Um, and sharing your thoughts and ideologies. And I always enjoy hearing the thoughts and ideologies of other people so on their YouTubes. Um, I find it very refreshing, just like that scripture just said. It's like a drink of cool water from a mountain spring. And the best thing we can do in life is to, uh, to share some words of encouragement with others. And uh, I hear what people are saying to me. And I want you to know that I thank you and I appreciate it when I receive messages uh, through videos and heartfelt uh, good, uh, good seed is good. And I hope that someday um, that uh, I can give more of a hopeful uh, good seed to people than I give bad seeds. Uh, but it's in this human condition, we go both ways, don't we? I think it's important to remember that we are both the evil man in these Proverbs and the good man. This is not a separation of people, it's a separation of heart. And, and uh, we, are, we are always playing both sides of that coin. And this is what the struggle is, the battle, the fight. This, uh, that we saw Paul fight with that angel. We saw Saul fight with this angel. Until the breaking of the daylight came, he fought with this angel. And that angel told him one time, hey, let me go, man. The daylight is coming. And he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And, that's how we have to be with these scriptures. We have to be diligent. We have to make our daily sacrifice. Yeah, it's a wrestling match. Yeah, we're trying to change the way we are, to change the way we think to a better thing. Amen. What can be better than that? So I hope everybody has a great day. And if you're reading this uh, video, seeing this video years into the future, I don't know what the future held for you. But uh, no matter what uh, predicament this world ends up in, um, you should know that a day in the Holy Scriptures is a great day. Every day in the Word of God is a good day. You have a chance to make your day better, and that's a good thing. And God affords us that chance through the reading of Scriptures. God bless you, and come on back here to see me sometime, won't you? I'm always here in the country early in the morning with that old rooster crowing, telling us all it's time to get up and get our day going. And uh, it's going to be a good day today. I love you. Hang in there.